and what of the Moray Firth dolphins? How much aggression is there in their social relationships? The researchers here have only been observing bottlenose dolphins for five years, but they've built on the Florida and Shark Bay studies. There are similarities, but the researchers haven't seen the collusion between males for access to females. It's absolutely fascinating because we've seen nothing like that. We obviously see fighting, we see uh, males battling with one another, we see a lot of animals jumping around, um, hitting each other in the air, but we don't see the coordinated behaviour of two males either side of a female, the, the herding that's been described elsewhere. And it's a real mystery why in the Murray Firth this isn't the case. But the bonding between mothers and their calves is clearly similar to Florida and Australia. Okay. Here. But, uh, if you look, each, each adult seems to be accompanied by a slightly smaller individual, and often these are some of these sort of uh, four or five year old calves. It's the male behaviour which is radically different. Here, the males are real loners. There's one called number 20, and one called, well, uh, Black and Decker, we call him, and another one, 19. And we see them moving great distances. They moved uh, over 100 kilometers once in four days. And they seem to just travel all over the place. The male range is so wide, the researchers have trouble unraveling what their reproductive strategies might be. We've really been trying to, to describe the, the female distribution rather more. But even when you have a good idea what the different strategies are, you don't necessarily know who, who obtains the mating. After all, if you've got three males chasing one female, only one of those males can fertilize the egg. And without a blood test, you can't be sure which one did. But could it be that the females choose? Uh, we've seen some activity where a female will roll upside down or onto her back or onto her side, and she'll actually protect her genital area from, you know, she'll have it actually out of the water so that the males can't get alongside her to mate. And, and I'm sure there's other ways by going back into a group of females and, and this kind of thing. I'd be very surprised if females don't have a choice about which males they actually mate with. So a distinction between sex play for social bonding and for reproduction. There's sexual activity between siblings, peers and parents and their young. But it seems that females may choose to mate outside this close community. A good example came from the study in Florida where they found that uh, when they did paternity, paternity testing on the um, the young, they looked at the genes and who was the mother and the father of the, of the offspring. They found that uh, 13 out of 14 of the young came from males that weren't in the community of animals that they were looking at. They were, the fathers came from a different social unit. So apparent sexual interaction between members of family groups or even the same community may be just a means of consolidating social bonds. And sexual rivalry is not the only reason for aggression. The Moray Firth dolphins are an isolated community. Their nearest neighbours are about 800 miles away. Nevertheless, aggressive encounters do take place between resident males. What's the reason for that? It's very difficult to interpret what's going on. It's, it's, um, it's, it's like watching a fight in a pub between humans. If you can't understand the language or you just come across what's going on, it's, you just see the fight, you don't necessarily understand the context. And we do see quite a lot of violence between both bottlenose dolphins with other bottlenose dolphins, but we've also observed them um, having violent interactions with harbour porpoises in the area, and maybe that's uh, competition for food or uh, competition for areas. Um, we just don't know the reasons why, but, but certainly it's uh, uh, fairly aggressive and violent interactions we see. About 30% of harbour porpoises washed up dead here have been battered to death by bottlenose dolphins, 10 to 20 animals a year. This aggression cuts right across our image of the dolphin. Even the scientists who've seen it don't want to publicize this aspect of dolphin behavior. It's not that I'm reluctant to tell people about it, it's just we don't really understand it to, to put it in a context that, that is sort of, well, to put it in any scientific context at the moment in relation to other questions like aggression and, and friendliness and, uh, and social behavior. It's just, it's a complete mystery really. One possible reason perhaps could be that the porpoises interfere with the dolphins' echolocation, disrupting their hunt for fish. 
This makes the work of Vincent Yannick of great importance. He is studying the way in which dolphins use sounds using underwater microphones. Certain sounds are important in aggressive encounters. There's one idea that these sounds are actually so high in amplitude that they could hurt the other animal, and especially the auditory system of the animal. Uh, dolphins actually perceive sounds through their lower jaw. And um, if you see these head-to-head -head interactions between males, they actually are directed head-to-head, -head, and it is possible that they try to focus their sounds towards the lower jaw of the other animal, but that hasn't been shown in any experiment so far. Using a multi-channel recorder, Vincent can pick up the sounds from three underwater microphones. By filming what he sees on the surface, and by working out the distance each dolphin is to the nearest microphone, he can link the sounds to an individual dolphin. Previous research methods such as attaching a microphone to the dolphin are too limiting. This way, he can record the use of sound in natural circumstances. These are clicks and signature whistles. And two other adults, a bit more to the left, fourth to fifth house on the other side. The left one's now moving more towards the end of the houses there. Just follow with the camera. These high intensity sounds, called burst pulsed sounds, are used in aggressive encounters. This channel where the dolphins come in to feed is ideal for this research and the three microphones can be fixed to strategic points. Listening to the noises that they make is, is, is going to be a new revolution in understanding what's going on. And there's other techniques like using sonar to actually almost take away the problems of visibility and being able to see what they're doing underwater. I, I think we're just teetering on the brink of, of, of an understanding. We've just had the first look, at, it's like the, the edge of an iceberg um, really understanding how animals develop as well, how an individual from growing up as a calf starts to fit into the social network. To chart the life successes of individual dolphins will be the next challenge. What we have gleaned of the private lives of dolphins so far can only tell us a little.